parametric equation. Usually, these are worth a lot of marks. Don't be intimidated though, because if you follow simple steps, they're very easy to secure all the nine marks. So it says the curve C has these parametric equations for T being positive. Find the equation of the normal to C at the point where C intersects the line Y equals X. All right, form a plan for all of these questions. So you don't even need to know what the parametric equations look like, look like, but I'll show you visually what's going on because it allows us to form a strategy. So here's my X, Y axis. Let's just say the parametric equation looks like this, yeah? Who knows? Maybe you do. I wanna know where this curve C, where does it intersect the line Y equals X? Let's just say Y equals X here, yeah? It wouldn't intersect more than once in this case. Just pretend that goes back up this way. It's saying where they intersect, find the equation of the normal to this curve. Normal meaning perpendicular, maybe something like this. It's asking us to find the equation of this line, okay? So with this visual, it helps us to plan ahead, okay? So the first thing we wanna know is where do they intersect? So I wanna know where this intersects this. Now the first mistake, well it's not really a mistake that students make is they try and convert this to Cartesian and then do simultaneous equations in the Cartesian plane. Guys, if they have things in parametric equations, keep it like that. X is 3T, X is 3T, Y is T plus one over T, just make the substitutions. Okay, so this is gonna help us work out the point P. So, making our substitution, substitutions, Y is T plus one over T equals X, which is three T. Now there's clearly simultaneous equations, vibes, multiplying through by T. So we get T squared plus one is three T squared. Uh, bring this over here. We get two T squared is one divide by two, and then root that. Now we get half, then we root that, we're gonna get one over root two. Now you're saying, okay, well, what plus or minus? That's why we've got t is bigger than zero. So we can kind of like ignore this. We don't really know what it looks like, but if t is bigger than zero, then we're only looking at the positive x values anyway. So this would make sense. Okay, so we've got all of that. Now we need to find the x and y coordinates, don't we? So x, I could treat this as root two over two, it's probably easier to work with. So x, it's gonna be three lots of that, three root two over two. And y is t, which is root two over two. Obviously you can use your calculator for this. Plus, I guess I'm demonstrating that you don't even need a calculator for most of this stuff. Uh, one over t, where if t is one over root two, when you reciprocate that, you get root two. That's over one, so two root two over two. When you add them, you get three root two over two. Okay, so they're the exact same coordinate. So this point here, uh, which I've just made up, root two over two, three root two over two. So now we can work out the equation of the normal. Now what's the most important thing you need to work out is the gradient. So we're gonna have to differentiate this. I'm gonna plan ahead. I'm gonna write this as t plus t to the minus one. And let's differentiate. dx by dt is three. Differentiating this, dy by dt is differentiate t1, then minus one, t to the minus two. So one minus t to the minus two. Okay, so that's the differential of that. Now we just need to sub in our values. Now you can work out dy by dx now, but if you want, you can just sub in your values right now. Um, I could write this as one minus one over t squared. So it just makes the algebra a little bit messy, a little bit less messy when you substitute now. So we're gonna sub in t as one over root two or uh, root two over two, whichever one will be nicer to substitute. So we'll get one minus now t squared, I already know t squared's a half. So we get one over half, one divided by a half is two, one minus two is minus one. So my gradient then, dy by dx, is the change in y, which is minus one, divided by the change in x, which is three. 
but that's the gradient as if we had the tangent. So the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal. I call that m perpendicular, so the gradient perpendicular, negative reciprocal 3. To be fair, my diagram is not bad, even though I made it up on the spot. Now we just do y minus y1. So we're going to do y minus the y coordinate, which was 3 root 2 over 2, is the gradient x minus the same thing. Now they don't give you the form that they want it in, so I usually say if that's an integer, just expand, do y equals mx plus c. If that's a fraction, do um, ax plus by plus c is 0. So let's just expand that. So you get y minus 3 root 2 over 2 is 3x minus 9 root 2 over 2. And then we add that over. By adding that over, we're going to get plus 3 root 2 over 2. So there we're going to get our answer y is 3x. Then we get minus 9 plus 3. Minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6. Minus 6 divided by 2 is minus 3 root 2. How's my diagram? It's not bad, right? Considering uh, I just made up a graph on the spot. That is 9 marks. And if you look at each step, step by step, you'll think, or realize that it's actually not that difficult. Obviously, to think about the whole problem is what makes this nine marks. It's a collection of many, many individual parts. So guys, if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you wanna submit your own questions, you can head to the Lung Gang Reddit, link is in the description. And if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, then more details are in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Nice.